As the diplomats entered the meeting room, I found myself left outside said room in the antechamber with one of the humans, the pilot of their shuttle. After a few awkward minutes of just standing there, competing with the human in a wall-staring contest, he decided to break the silence, trying to make some small talk, no doubt. So, Captain Highcrest, I hope I am not overstepping here, but we have a bet going on, back on our station, and I was hoping you would help me settle it. What do you use for ammunition for the ship's railgun? My money is on tungsten spheres. Needless to say, I was a little surprised by the question. Humans were not supposed to have this technology. Well, yes, actually, we use tungsten. Depending on the weapon, ship's weapon or ground mechanized artillery, we use spheres, or sometimes tungsten rods. Please excuse my surprise, but I was under the impression that you, humans, did not possess this type of weapons. Oh, well, we don't actually have rail guns. I mean, we have some experiments and we know the basic concepts. Unfortunately, the superconductors are kind of rare in our home in order for us to be able to make any viable weapons at the moment. But since we can travel a bit faster through the stars, I'm guessing we can find those types of materials easier. Also, seeing you guys use them will increase the military's confidence in this tech. So, we will probably have them soon. But if you don't have this kind of weapons yet, how did you know we did? Come on, man. You've been parked next to us for two weeks. The view of your ship's exterior is the main attraction on our station. It is pretty obvious what the main weapons were if you just look at it. Those big tubes with blue coils around them. That was the easiest thing to guess. The point defence ones were a bit more difficult. You guys don't know how many fights those started among our engineers and weapon specialists. Some said ballistics, some said lasers, some said gauze guns. It was all settled when one of the engineers pointed a thermal cam at them when that asteroid flew by, and you guys turned them online. When armed, those things are radiating heat like crazy. They are keeping something really, really hot inside them. Those are mayhem weapons, right? I mean, they use magneto-hydrodynamic explosive munitions, no? Out of words, I just nodded. A gesture that we happen to share with the humans. I mean, we did not call them sane, but yes, the point defense weapons fire superheated metal alloys. Yeah, that engineer with the thermal cam, he really took the big pot on that one. So, you humans, you have mayhem weapons? What? No, I mean, it's the same thing as the railgun thing. We made some experiments, we understand the concept, but we still mostly rely on ballistics and missiles. The humans seemed a bit ashamed by their technological backwardness. Myself, I was out of words for the moment. Amazed by how someone could recognise alien tech that was not yet properly developed by themselves, and I was trying to process this. This moment led to another spun of awkward silence. Being the host here, I was the captain of this ship after all. It was my duty to break the silence this time. I hope you did not come with a team of diplomats just to ask me about the railgun ammunition. I tried to joke to lighten the atmosphere. The embarrassed look returned to his face. No, of course not. It's just that the diplomats assumed you were going to teleport them onto your ship and when that didn't happen, they realized they needed me to shuttle them in. But I am not clear for the diplomatic talk, so... I was left waiting, and you are probably stuck here because of me, to keep me company. Sorry about that. Hold on. Teleport? You know, deconstruct something to molecular level, transmit the data, and reconstruct it exactly at another location? You have this technology? No, no, no. We just assumed you did. The invitation for this meeting was something like, prepare yourself for transport. You should have seen the diplomats. Huddling together in the middle of the station, clasping their briefcases to their chests, awaiting to be deconstructed to molecular levels. It was hilarious. A misunderstanding, then. I was a bit disappointed, but it was not the first time when a more backward race, technologically speaking, assumed that our tech could do anything. It was an interesting concept, though. This teleporting by deconstructing to molecular level. Should work, at least for simple elements. Something to pitch to the scientists, then, but later... Right now, I had a guest to entertain, and I must admit that I found this human, and his views on technology, to be most interesting. I was already pretty sure that finding out that the humans already know the concepts behind railguns or mayhem weapons is more than what are the diplomats are going to find out about human tech in a hundred meetings. 
So I decided to find out more. Pilot Jenkins, this diplomatic meeting is scheduled for two of your hours. It would seem wasteful to just stand here. Would you like me to give you a small tour of the ship? I swear to the Emperor. It was like asking a child if he wants some cake. His eyes got wide, and his smile reached from ear to ear. Oh, I would love that. It would be a childhood dream come true. I also smiled. That's a strange way of expressing things. Aren't children supposed to dream of cake and treats and toys? Sure, but right off the spaceships. I never knew a kid who did not dream to be on a spaceship, saving the universe and so on. Probably most of them dream about eating sweets in a spaceship. He laughed at his own joke, as he joined me on the ship's main corridor. I was about to point out that they arrived here in a spaceship, but stopped myself. After all, the shuttle they have arrived in, compared to this battle cruiser, was rather quaint. I think we should start with the recreation hub first, since it's close, on this same level as the meeting room we just left behind. The humour was practically skipping along beside me, his head switching from side to side, trying to take in every detail. And not only looking, he seemed compelled to touch everything. The light fixtures, the door controls, the air vents. About every few paces he would let out a whoa or an awesome. He was so excited and moving so fast that I had trouble keeping up with his pace. So without thinking too much, I activated my suspenser belt in order to be more nimble and not make him wait after me. The human noticed this and froze still for a second, but just for a second. Holy crap! You got a suspenser belt just like Baron Harkonnen. That is so cool. Before my confused person could react, he had squatted near me, examining the belt, gently waving a hand under one of the suspensers and giggling. Where have you seen a similar device? Who is this Baron person? Now, this tech was clearly not available to the human world. We would have spotted it rather easy, even from this distance. Something was not right here. Oh, that is just a fictional character. It's from a science fiction book. Basically, someone imagined it. We thought about it, but we don't know how to make it yet. But now that we know it is possible, our nose won't give up until they crack this up. Man, so, so many applications for this. He was brought out of his examination of my belt by the passing of a steward pushing a trolley. Like that card! He exclaimed, pointing at the thing. Why not replace those wheels with suspensers? I bet you could do the same for freight cars or for suspending lights, the... Uh, Levitating tanks. How awesome would those be, huh? To go over any terrain? Flying cars, drones, like really silent ones. Hell, make some of these babies big enough and you can probably move a spaceship with them. Oh shit, that's it right? It's a miniature iron engine. He stopped when he saw the bewildered expression on my face, and I think he misunderstood my expression. I'm sorry, Captain, I really hope I'm not committing industrial espionage here or something like that. If I'm out of line, just tell me. No offence will be taken, I promise. If you want to cancel the tour, there is absolutely no problem. And I promise you that I understand. I was not offended or anything. I was just amazed beyond words. This creature, this human, who has never before seen this piece of tech, was spewing out possible uses for it at a rate worthy of a prize-winning scientist. And besides that, he just correctly identified the principle behind it in less than a few seconds. So, do humans have iron engines? I managed to babble, trying to hide my stupor. I already knew that they didn't, but I just did not get how someone can see so clearly the concept behind a totally alien tech. Well, not exactly, at least not ones with a decent output. Our ships still use combustion for thrusting, but we do have some experiments going in that direction, and some small iron engines, but just with small directional changes. Again, the fact that we see them functioning on your ships as the main thrusting element will greatly increase confidence in this particular tech and the study in that area will be greatly increased. And by confidence, I mean the funding. He laughed again at his own joke, and then looked expectantly at me. I just pointed to the recreation hub door, trying to buy more time for my brain to process this. That is the recreation area for the crew. Let's go inside to show you how we relax on long voyages. By this point, I was feeling a little frustrated by the way the human nonchalantly regarded our way more advanced technology with a lot of, yeah, we're going to have that soon too. It was rather cocky of him. Every other race we've met so far had been awed by our technology. Thought of it as magic or supernatural, even godlike. I knew it was not civilised from my part to think like this, but 
Now I wanted to awe him. So I had decided to show him the holodeck. I was already smirking when I chose from the available scenarios the one entitled Hunt for the Wild Chakra. Selection completed, I opened the door and stepped inside the empty, for now, holodeck, with the human in tow. I said nothing to the human while the program loaded, not to ruin the surprise. You see, I really wanted to unnerve him a bit. There was no way he would not be blown away by the holographic simulation, maybe even scared. I felt a giggle crawling up my throat, watching the human gawk at the walls dotted with projectors, and then, even though before the projectors had time to warm up properly, he spoke. Whoa, this is a holodeck ride, like where you simulate different scenarios. Do you guys use hard lights? Can you pick up objects here? Are the scenarios and characters fixed, or are they reactive? Maybe AI controlled? Before I could answer, not that I could have answered anything with my mouth agape, the projectors came to life, and the rocky savannah materialised around us. The hot wind started to blow through our fur, and, uh, hair? Burrs chippered all around. Two suns peeked through the clouds from above. The human, grinning wildly instead of cowering in awe, was trying to take it all in. Nice touch with the warm wind. Hey, I can even feel the sun burning. Very realistic. When he managed to gently pick up a stone from the ground without too much glitch, and maintain the simulation in his palm, he cackled with glee. Myself, I was over the shock of the human knowing what a holodeck was, even though I was absolutely sure he'd never seen one in his life. But I still had hope for some more cowering-like reaction. You see, I knew the simulation well, and knew where to look for the approaching chakra. I knew it would be stalking from behind the two bigger boulders, and any minute now, the hapless human would step into his range. If a chakra leaps right at you, even a simulated one, your flight instinct is going to take over no matter how familiar you are with holodecks. So I watched, breath held, with some remorse actually, as the human moved from item to item, closer and closer to the beast. And then it happened. The chakra leapt with a growl from only three meters aiming for the human's side. And somehow the human had time to turn his head towards the simulated beast, see it, and step aside out of the way. And then, instead of fleeing in panic, he faced the chakra making... cooing noises? Oh my god! Who's a good kitty? Oh my, you're gorgeous! Nice kitty! Come here, baby! The simulated chakra seemed to share my disbelief. What in the name of the emperor was the human trying to do? Pet it? To his disappointment, the kitty turned away, according to the simulation scenario, and disappeared in the tall grass at a sprint. The human turned to me with bright, moist eyes. Oh my, I don't know what that was, but it was gorgeous! His fur looks so fine, and that cute face with the whiskers, oh, I want one. I must admit, it really startled me jumping like that, but damn, it was cute. If it startled you, how come you didn't run? Don't humans have a survival instinct, a flight instinct? Nah, it's more of a fight or flight instinct for us, actually. He said casually, fight or flight? Can a species survive with both these instincts? I mean, if they need a flight instinct, it means that there were animals that could kill them, they used to hunt them. In this case, how was not the fight instinct eradicated? Individuals with a fight instinct should have been eliminated by predators, right? And wait. Did you find the chakra cute? Then it's clearly a predator. A real one would probably be able to really hurt you if it catches you unaware. Yeah, I know, I know, but it was really, really pretty. And on Earth, I'm based in Fort Davis. We got mountain lions all over the place there, and those things are a lot bigger than this. I'm rather used to big cats, they usually leave you alone if you leave them alone. It's not like they're grizzly bears or something. Oh, sorry, those are some bigger predators we have on Earth. I can show you how they look on my phone here. It's connected by ship's network, so I should be able to find some nice videos with them. Hey, you guys must have some scanners for this holodeck to add things to the simulations that are not in your database. If we let the scanner record my phone's screen, think we could project the video here? I swear, I could feel my translator overheating while trying to keep up with the human's explanations. I was curious about the mentioned predator, so I directed Jenkins towards the wall, where I opened the scanning cubicle. I placed his phone in front of one of the recorders, and used the keyboard to command it to project the image a few meters from us. The projection was only two-dimensional and showed a brownish beast lumbering through a river. It did not look more impressive than a chakra. Actually, it looked quite small and slow. No, 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 size is all wrong, let me see that, said the human, and pushed his face above the console. I watched him muse as he tried to understand the controls. My smile faded as he delightfully exclaimed, Ah, this must be it. 
The zoom in, zoom out, yeah. Let's see now, a bit bigger, bigger, that should be about right. I looked up from the console, back to the image of the bear and froze. Even in 2D, the video of the enormous predator was frightening. Even the sluggish part went to the abyss, when the grizzly moved his head in a flash to catch out of the air something silvery that flew from the water near him. It then proceeded out of the river, with his prey between his huge slobbery jaws. He reached the bank, and started tearing the silvery thing apart. By the Emperor! That is impressive. Are you sure you didn't zoom in too much? Yeah, I think I got the size just about right. Anyway, that is not even the biggest predator on Earth. Over the next 20 minutes, he showed me a polar bear, a saltwater crocodile, and a lion. I had to stop the show because our time was limited to the duration of the diplomatic meeting, and definitely not because my legs felt like jelly. Each time he brought up another beast, I barely stopped myself from giving into my flight instinct. But, to be honest, I was more impressed with the way the human was using the console all by himself. Since the first image, he controlled the display for the whole duration, not only the size of the projection. He figured out how to isolate and project only the animal from his video. He made the projection move through the holodeck while the animal was moving his legs. He adjusted the lighting and colours to match, making the holodeck take colours from his video background and mash it into the current projection. He seemed to really enjoy discovering all the functions of the console. He did it with such ease that it was eerie. When I suggested to move, he seemed reluctant to part with the device. I must admit that I am truly impressed with the ease you use that console. It looked as if you'd used something similar before. Hmm. It must be because I'm such a huge gamer. I play all type of computer games. Strategy, RPG, shooters, you name it, I play it. And every game has different controls. I swear that some game designers actually try to make controls as weird as possible. It's their way of bringing something new with each game they put out. So it's sort of mandatory for a gamer to be good at this type of things. Also, the holodesk controls were very intuitive. I have a couple of VR simulation games back at base, and this was similar. VR? Virtual reality. Pretty similar to a holodeck, but because we lack the hard light tech, it's something simpler. I'm pretty sure that holodecks like this one will be the next step for the VR tech. You know what I don't get? Why keep the controls for the holodeck like that on a fixed console when you could project them anywhere inside the projection? Move the controls to air touch displays? I mean, you obviously have the means to do it. That was actually not a bad point. Another thing I would have to remember to pass it on to our science team. And then I had the most brilliant idea of my career. I asked the human what other technologies he would like to see in the remaining time. And just like that, I got a glimpse into the mind of a dreamer. Just one individual, and it has so many ideas. Sure, some were pure fantasy, but others were firmly in the realm of possibility. I am convinced that an entire race of such individuals, with their minds centuries ahead of their current development, would indeed achieve great things and bring a new golden age of science to the universe. When the diplomatic meeting was over, the two of us had just made it back to the antechamber. The human was absolutely thrilled with the tour. He was delighted to have seen so many of his dreams transplanted into reality. And myself, I was really looking forward to the next meeting with my science team, as I had collected in these two hours a lot of improvement ideas for our existing equipment, and also many more ideas for new devices and technologies. After we all said farewell and the human delegation departed, I invited myself through Captain's authority to the debriefing session that the diplomats were having post-meeting with the humans. The Empire's policy towards the humans from now on would be based on their report and recommendations, and I wanted to make sure the report reflected what I had observed in these two hours. As I suspected, the bureaucrats hadn't really tried to look beyond the surface. Their report painted humanity as a polite but backward race, with very little to none valuable technologies. Extremely low military power, at least space-wise. Very few available resources to trade, overcrowded planet. They saw basically little value in developing relationships with them. I let them finish their discussion and report without interrupting them, and afterwards, with all the authority and severity I could muster, asked them what in the name of the Emperor they were thinking. Then after I got their attention, I proceeded in telling my shocked audience about my own experience with the human pilot, Jenkins, of how many useful ideas he had, how fast he understood concepts beyond humanity's actual development, about the ease and familiarity he showed with all the tech I exposed him on our ship, of how close humanity is to developing many technologies, on par with ours. As a conclusion, I strongly advise them to reconsider their report, or to request another meeting with the humans if they liked for clarifications. But I inform them that I will send a report of my own, directly to the Emperor, 
strongly suggesting an immediate alliance treaty with this unexpected treasure of race.